I'm in my element. Money. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. All right, guys. So, um, what I ordered was a grilled chicken panini, and I only have chicken, the chipotle sauce, and the uh, fried onions on there, or the grilled onions. All right. So, what did you get? <laughs> So, I have the grilled chicken panini as well with uh, tomato, cheese, chicken, onions, and lettuce. Yes. There it is. Yes, that's uh, it. That's and this little it. pickle on the side. And then this little stale looking pickle. Like, who eats? Yeah. That's so weird. Looking. I got some french fries. Hope they're good. And as my side, I have fruit. Oh, fruit. Yeah. Okay. So, I just put it. Everything on the plate, trying to be a little fancy. <laughs> I'm gonna throw mine on the plate as well. That looks good. I think I like that. All right, and then to drink, right? I have water. What are you I'm drinking? The main dish here is guava juice. Oh, guava that looks so juice. good. Let me try it now. <laughs> thought I wasn't when I was? Yeah, that's the Listen, one. Listen, he barely had a sick, <laughs> sip talk or something. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that thing was good. That's all I needed. Get the job done. All right, so Mike. Yeah. Please introduce yourself to the people. What? And so, um, I feel like I got my hands all tied together in this formal setting. Uh, let me drink some of my guava juice. It's just your, uh, your elixir. Ah, boom, that's it. <laughs> so yes, I feel strong now. But no, nah, uh, my name is Mike from Northwest DC. And I am here, I'm the first generation American. My family was, first person my family born outside of Jamaica. Um, so I'm the, I guess, essentially the child of immigrants, we should say. So yeah, so that's really what it is. So, um, you know, I I grad just recently went to school in Ohio for my undergrad and then was in New York and got my master's degree there. Um, so, you know, I feel like I came from a lower income family um, and, you know, I'm just trying to make it. I'm trying to kind of build that generational wealth and that's kind of like where my, you know, my mindset is right now and how do I go about doing that? What's the process? What do I have to do? What sacrifices do I have to make? What position should I, you know, be in when I do that? Yeah, so how do you, so how, how are we going to do that? And how does that work? And like, what's your, what's your perception of what do you feel is missing from, you know, children of immigrants, like first generation Americans? Um, what do I think is missing from mm -hmm. that? So I think you, they come here for you to have a better life, right? So you have to be that next step up. So now when you have kids, they're way further ahead than you are. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm at right now, like trying to get that next move to make sure that I'm in a more comfortable, stable role. And financially, my, pe my family can essentially like enjoy the fruits of their labor. Like that's what it really comes down to for me, right? Like. How can my family just be good? Money isn't something that we gotta worry about. Right? And of course, you know, problems come with this stuff like that, but I just wanna make sure we good. We ain't gotta worry about certain things, you know, parents, grandparents getting older. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know my grandmother, she's having her moments right now. Um, when she, you know, say she might have a little ache and pain there and stuff like that. So, you know, I just want to make sure she good. She can come on, she can chill mm -hmm. or do whatever it is that makes her happy, right? If she wants to be in Jamaica, I want to make sure she's so financially she she good. she in Jamaica now? You no, know, she lives here in D.C. Oh, yeah. Maybe yeah. I've seen her in one of your... You might have. One of your, yeah, one of your yeah. stories. Right, and then one of my Instagram Mike is a videos. really, he's a really big family man. So if you follow yeah. him on social media... He That's always fine. posts his family. He has a, an adorable niece. Oh, she's mm -hmm. the cutest and she's very intelligent. Jade Alexis, what's up, boo? Yeah. What's up, future doctor? <laughs> she's what's very future doctor. Make So sure. when you see this, just know I was with you shooting in the gym, yep. bro. When you become a big doctor, all that good stuff. <laughs> Uncle Mike saw it first. Hey, you hear me? I called it. You called it here first. Mm -hmm. She's going to be great. Um, yeah, and then um, I'm the godfather for her little brother. Oh, wow. Jaden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like I'm really the godfather of two. Yeah, I'm exactly. Yeah, that was like your um, kids. Right, basically. You feel me? 
So yeah, man. I know for me personally, um, being an immigrant and having mm -hmm. immigrant parents, mm -hmm. um, what my parents learn uh, lack is the lack of information to to share with me. That is so good. You know what I mean? That is so good. Because they, for the most part, they stay within their community and they're not really, outside of working, they're not really involved in anything Yeah, else. in, you know, the, the American culture, mm -hmm. per se. So, the information that they're gathering are from other immigrants. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so I was, I'm... So they don't have they don't know. They yeah, don't know. they like they don't information. Know they don't know. You know what I mean? So it's and like, that's why I said the generational wealth, right? Because when you de develop that, you learn something that you didn't know before. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like it's our job to like teach our future kids, you know, information and also right. like seeking additional information to help them. Where that's my it. parents are just kind of they're content and they're happy that that I'm doing better than them. Mm -hmm. But because they lack the knowledge of, you know, other things. And I think, and also too, the generation is different. This is the age of social media. Mm -hmm. My parents are not on social media like that. Like my dad has an iPhone, an iPad, yeah, and a right. thing. But he's not like, I mean, he sends me stuff about health and things like that. And he's, he's very knowledgeable, but there's so many different things that he doesn't know about, mm -hmm. that I know about. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, I mean, yeah. it's understandable. Yeah, access to different information. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm talking to my realtor today. So I'm looking to buy property. <coughs> Man. <coughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Fried dry. <laughs> I'm over here dying, son. Give me the ketchup. <laughs> I don't know in fact, he coughed and I kicked the chair. I mean, I kicked the table. Yo, son, and that's like, so <laughs> sick. <laughs> we cutting that out? No. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Yo, that's not even funny, dude. I'm like, I'm just then, gonna choke like that. And the ketchup just flew. Oh, it's, it's new. I'm goofy as hell. I don't, I don't even eat ketchup, so. She don't even eat ketchup. Woo. Make sure I don't choke again, though. Yeah, because I keep hearing that little voice. I'm like, he's gonna drink some water. <laughs> <laughs> that boy needs some milk. I feel like I gotta go searching for information, like, so I'm never not, I feel like I'm never not working. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so I'm just thinking about um, all of those things. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so, during your search, like, what have you found? I've been trying to find ways to, like, make money, right? And I've found that. The, the most legal way to do it mm -hmm. is real estate. Mm -hmm. It just makes sense. Especially in this area. Because everything, right. Because you, I'm right in it. Yeah, especially in the DMV. Like. So if you buy in prime location right now, three to four years, you can, your money can double. Because mm -hmm. it's changing that rapidly. Now, three to four years, your money can double. You can do, like, a little project on the house. Maybe you dig in the basement or something like that. You dig down under and you make a little space, and now your money has increased by $100,000. Your property value is like just by doing a $50,000 project. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you put in the work, you, but you got to have the capital to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's the other piece. So, that's I also understand that, too. So, I know the people that are, you know... Struggling to stack money right now, mm -hmm. like, and that's a real thing, right? But if you can do it and put yourself in a position to win, because mm -hmm. once you have that that money stashed up, now your options are kind of endless, right? right? You know what I'm saying? But you gotta be humble for a few years. You gotta make some sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Maybe you stay at the crib. Maybe you um, mm -hmm. you you know, and get a roommate do something, something. right? Yeah, do something different. Yeah, do something different. And figure out how you can uh, make a sacrifice for two years to to be ten years ahead. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Take a step back up to to take ten forward. Yeah. That's it. It makes sense though. But you know what I'm saying? It's, it's not for everyone. Everyone it's can't not. do it. So, but so for the people that can, why not? Mm -hmm. Or you know, when you get some money, don't go level up. Stay where you got, let the extra money stop. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think we come, you know, we're in a generation where, like, we see all these stars wearing these, like, name brands and things like that, and you aspire to be like them. So instead of investing your money properly, would you go and you buy the Gucci slides or what's the, what's the? You know, some people are just Balenciagas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that Balenciaga is a trip somewhere. You know what I mean? That's a part of a down payment to a future house. You know what I mean? Experiences, you know, experience different things. And, um, yeah, you might go in and you might buy something saying you may lose, right? Like, there's a big, there's a chance that you lose too. But, to the way I see it, if you buy strategically and you have a plan in mind so you, and you understand that it's going to be a few years long term because look at the great look at warren buffett right mm-hmm. like invested in the smaller companies before they blew up apple your um you know your microsoft coca-cola mcdonald's mm-hmm. things of that nature you know what i'm saying so he's a billionaire now but he didn't start that way mm-hmm. and he's still so simple like the guy practically drives like a Toyota Camry that he's had since when on when he goes to McDonald's every day for breakfast. Like, see, so, you know what I'm saying? So, like, little things like that, right? That's how we keep money. That's how you. That's how you save and keep the money. The richest guys are the most simple. You gotta be simple. You gotta be simple. You know what I'm saying? You're advertising money. Right. <laughs> you're right, advertising right, wealth. Right, right. But then you don't have a place. You don't have a place to call your own. I just mm-hmm. think that's crazy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I guess not everyone wants a house or things like that. You can mm-hmm. get a nice little condo, you know, and that's an investment into yourself. That and you, you own it. You own it. And when you're ready to move on, you can sell it. You know what I mean? But I just feel like we're not necessarily in a culture that promotes that. And to have like oh, young sure. people, yeah, young people saying, all right, yeah, come on, people, like, let's own something. Let's, let's own. Right, right. And do it together. Yeah. And do it together. If you can build with somebody, you got people you can trust. Yeah. Trust. And do it. Do it together. Mm-hmm. Like, and that trust is the big trust piece. is the big thing. Um, it is a cold world out there. It is. You know, so you gotta make sure that everything is done in unison and everyone has the same amount. Of you. Create your own board. Mm-hmm. Who's gonna be your CEO, your CFO, your CMO, your brand strategist? Like all that good stuff, right? Like mm-hmm. you gotta have a team of people. Like think about the people that are the most wealthy, right? You got lawyers, you got a specific doctor, um, you know what I'm saying? You got an accountant, mm-hmm. uh, you might got a, a wealth manager, you know what I'm saying? Like they got people to do different things and yep. you gotta pay them for that. You gotta pay them for those services. Pay me for my time. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So I think getting access to those things, right? And to get access to those things, you gotta have money because mm-hmm. you gotta pay for those services. So how are we gonna get this money so we can really get this money? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. That's the way I think about it. Like, money right, makes you get money. Some money <laughs> and you, right, mm-hmm. and that's it. Money makes money. That's really what it kind of comes down to. So, you know. So do you have any suggestions on how to get this money? Besides... Besides stacking it? Yeah. No. Besides like, real estate? Yeah, besides real estate. Okay. Um, you know what? Uh, I see. That's a good question. I, I've been so focused on real estate. I, I, I'm trying to like learn different things. I know YouTube is a big thing. Um, the, the stock market. I don't know if we've um, talked about that, which is a completely different investment. But that's long-term investment, like. If you work in the standard thing to do is to dedicate, you know, 10 to 15% of your paycheck, if you can, into your retirement account. Like, but do it first. Try and see how it is. Do you, will you miss the money? But you got to try it though. Like, you got to figure out, all right, boom, $300 is coming out of my check. My budget. Yeah, I mean, a $200 is coming out of my check or whatever it is. Can I, um, can I afford that? Mm -hmm. You got to look at your expenses. You know what I mean? Like, have a relationship with your, with your uh, budget. You know what I mean? Have a relationship with your finances, as I like to call it. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, so the stock market is, that's how I kind of would, su- I would I suggest doing it. I feel like it's just a safe bet, right? It's kind of something to have your safety net so that way when you get to retirement age, you'll at least have something to hold on to. But, like, the, a lot of conversation is, is that the retirement money that people have now, most people are going to run out of retirement. Dang. So the thing to do is to have another hustle, right? Mm-hmm. So don't just only depend on that retirement money. You got to figure it out what's next. When you turn 65 years old, you're going to be slaving for the man 
65? Um, nah, oh, that's dead. Mm-hmm. Like, that, it ain't happening. Like, I ain't even going like that. You know what I'm saying? I have another goal in mind. Mm-hmm. So, figure out how you're going to get this money now while you're young and how it's going to grow long term. Mm-hmm. And if you have, like, a, if you have a special talent, use it. Render your services. You know, if you know how to braid, braid on the side. If you're a, a good artist or, you know, whatever it is, you can always render your services to other people. And that money you don't spend, you're going to either invest that into your materials or whatever it is and put money aside. Yes, you know, you don't, you don't do the side hustle to spend. You know what I mean? The side hustle is for a bigger picture. You yes, know what sir. I mean? That's a re, re, invest in yourself. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest investment you can make. And think about it. You go to work every day or you know five days a week, and you're putting so much into a job. Mm-hmm. And the person, you know, the individuals that's high up, they're the ones reaping more of the benefits because they're making most of the money. And this is what I say to myself all the time. I'm sorry to cut you off. Yeah. Um, don't go to work for eight hours of the day and come home and do nothing. What's your job from 6 to 9? When you get off 9 to 5, what do you do from 6 to 9? And that's what's most important. Yeah. How are you going to build and gonna grow from 6 to 9? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, so people got to figure it out. Yeah. And you have to, you, you know, we all have time to do, you know, mindless things. Right. Like, Invest don't. Investing yourself. Don't go home and, you know, only watch Bad Girls Club. <laughs> like, that's it. That's all we're doing. We're gonna have dinner, we're gonna go to sleep. Yeah. And we're gonna do it again tomorrow. We ain't got nothing else going for ourselves. No. We just gonna go to work. Every single day we're gonna come home. We're gonna mukbang. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you ain't gonna get no money like that. That's one yeah. source of income. Yeah. You need multiple sources of income. What they say, um wow. I think the average millionaire has seven businesses. They have seven sources of income. Right? What? You guys hear that? The seven. average millionaire yeah. has seven sources of income. Yeah, it might, it might be millionaire or billionaire. I don't know. I might have to look that All right. Millionaire or billionaire, it don't no matter. <laughs> they, got, they got money coming in. They got money coming in. I mean, think about, like, Diddy, right? All of the sponsorships and stuff that he had. Think about Jay. Think, think about uh, Jay. And the sponsorships and stuff that he has, mm-hmm. like the ownership piece, being a part of the Brooklyn Nets. I heard he sold the um, the the Brooklyn Nets, his share of the Brooklyn Nets, but he owns a piece of the, the Barclays Center property. You hear this? So as the property value increases, he's going to get, his equity is increasing. That's a long-term investment. Mm-hmm. Like he's up right now because everything in Brooklyn up. It's going up. Mm-hmm. I was just talking to someone earlier today about how, you know, you you just got to drive through there now because you can't afford nothing over there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's interesting to just kind of see how these guys make moves. Meat Mill just recently bought Lids. Oh, wow. Uh, the yeah, hat bought, company? yeah, the hat company, exactly. I think he got a, a, a part ownership in that now. You know what I'm saying? So it's like making boss moves. Like, you got to own something. Yeah. That's the only way you're going to make it better. You know, listen, a lot of people own hats. <laughs> Why not? Listen, you, you go in there, you make some swag, a swaggy line, a little something. Mm-hmm. Everybody ain't finna be wearing that joint. Meet Mel, he can start a uh, a swaggy line for, you know, for lids. You know, maybe you do some like dad caps or something and have everybody all yeah, over the coast yeah. listen to a binding. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Um... So I think that's dope. You know what I'm saying? So he has the fan base to do that. So why not do it? Do it while you can. Because do it while you can. If they're in the industry, like, you're hot and then you're not. And then you're not. Exactly. So, so he yeah. has to make sure that he's always hot. Mm-hmm. Whether it's on stage look, look, or... Look at Rihanna. Yeah. Her business move that she's been, I'm, She don't even make no music. Yeah. She's she been getting this money. Getting Fenty. this money. What she makes, like, uh, bras and stuff. Oh, now. Savage. Savage yeah. Fenty. Now she she was doing the uh, Puma thing. Yeah. Everybody was buying the Pumas, or you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So like, and it's quality stuff. And she doing her thing. The makeup line, Fenty, Fenty mm-hmm. Beauty. Her father started to like try to make money off of her. Hustling, <laughs> hustling. He was like, Yo, I'm about to start some Fenty stuff too. <laughs> it's my name. <laughs> 
Yo. He was trying to find his own little favorite. Listen, he was trying to get a piece of the too. <laughs> Crazy, right? So I think they had to go into some legal mm-hmm. uh, situation with that. That's kind of something you got to do that with your father. Right, yeah, but you know, it is. that's part of the business, mm-hmm. right? That's how you got to protect your brand. And that's uh, what he's saying, like, make sure whoever you go into business with, you, you can, can trust. trust. You can trust. That's not a guy that she felt like she can go into business with. That's why he can't use her brand name. Mm-hmm. Or they would have had that conversation already. And that's her daddy. Her, that's her father. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. You just got to know. Some, sometimes it might be family. Sometimes it might be friends. Sometimes it might, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It might be the other way around. Right. How's your salmon? It's still delicious? Mm-hmm. Good as hell. You can tell. I'm like dog and this. Mm. I love a good meal. For sure. <laughs> For sure. And then your guava juice is it's hitting. It's hitting. It's hitting that spot. It's water. It's delicious. I mean, it's all McDonald's. When people think about McDonald's, they think about it as a fast food restaurant. But really, McDonald's makes their money from real estate. They are real estate. Um, they can send a, a real estate company first. So they buy property in specific areas and in hopes that the, pro- the property value increases. But what are they going to do with this space now? Let's create a, a restaurant to make revenue. Mm-hmm. Why not? And that's it. Like, yeah, I mean, so it kind of pays for itself. And then you also... Then you franchise it out, right? Mm-hmm. All they gotta do is buy the property and you deal with it. That's all they do. Are you serious? Yes! They don't even own half the joint. <laughs> they franchise them out. We will buy the property, we will own it. But you, you gotta run the restaurant. That's a dope puzzle. It's a hustle, son. And that's all I'm saying. Like, study a different hustle. Like, you're trying to figure out where your lane, I mean, whatever your lane is, you know what I mean? Because I know that there are a million of other ways that you can make money. But for me, mm-hmm. this for people that are looking for ways to potentially make money. This might be a direction you want to look at, mm-hmm. right? Because if you get four or five of your friends and y'all put money down on the spot, you're going to eat. Mm-hmm. You, you need six people to put up $10,000. Yep. Everybody's going to eat. Everybody's going to eat. Spot worth six hundred now, worth six hundred thousand. Yeah, I buy it. You know what I'm saying? It's worth six hundred now, and then it gets to a million. You get, you know what I'm saying? That's four hundred. That's four hundred thousand. Posting on my Instagram about all these companies trying to buy my property. Right, right, right. right. So that's pretty dope, by the way. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, like y'all like just being so forceful. The thing about it is. A lot of people end up get, um, becoming displaced. I don't want to say displaced, but you're selling your property willingly. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't realize how valuable, how valuable their properties are mm-hmm. based on location. I'm one of those people that I know my property is valuable. Okay. I can walk every time. How long have you been a homeowner? I've been a homeowner for 10 years. Okay. Guys, I can walk to Busboys. I can walk to Spice 8. I can walk to Elevation Burger. I can walk to Whole Foods. Best way, price right, shoppers, Safeway, Giants. You got all that over there. And yes, my organic market. Absolutely. And there's a host of other things. And Habit Burger, um, District Taco, Gold Gym. All those, all those locations I can walk to. Why would I sell my house? That's a very good question. A lot of people don't see the value in their home, but that is the. That I, I just want to say that was beautiful because that shows that you know your neighbor. Yeah, and a it's, lot of people live places and don't and don't know their neighborhood, and that's what I'm starting to realize as I look at property as well too. Like, there's a lot of DC that's out there, mm-hmm. like, and I feel like a lot of people don't really know. They don't know that. Right. So I'm literally riding around the city. Yeah. And finding things. When finding I first things. when I first moved here ten years ago, a lot of people, you know, <clears throat> you know, I'd say where I live, and they're like, oh, okay, like it was like a little snarky. Mm. or whatever but it's just like you know I saw the potential I didn't know it was going to get to the magnitude it is at right now I'm within walking distance from two train stations and they're building another one Mm. you know what I mean so if I want to go out in downtown DC I have the option of walking to the train and coming back I don't have to be on the highway for 20-30 minutes you know to get into DC and type for parking and I Mm. you know I know the I know the value of my location because 
I'm five minutes from Northeast DC and maybe 10 minutes from, you know, our major highways or mm -hmm. whatever. So I know that. So when you're sending me things talking about, oh, you know, we'll pay cash. My thing is, yes, it is great and I could sell, but I'm comfortable how, where how I'm at. How much more more? How much more are they trying to offer? I don't know. I've, I've never called because I don't. I don't even. They're, want they're, to, oh, they don't tell you. No, they don't. They don't say anything, right? So I don't even want to entertain them to call and be like, "Oh, how much are you gonna offer me?" And then next thing you know, like everybody's trying. Yeah, first, you got my number. You got my address. <laughs> and my address, like I'm not with it. So in me posting that, um, Cesar, he reached out to me. He reached out and he said, "Don't fall for it." He said, um, "Please though." I just got my license as a realtor in DC and these investors pay cash, but it takes years to pay. And they give you way less money than it's actually worth. Isn't that crazy? Why would I do that? Why would, why would I do that? That don't even make sense. And that's how, I think that's how they get a lot of people. It's like, you know, we offer you cash right now, you know, like we'll buy it as is and all this other stuff. And then you see, you know, and I understand sometimes people are in deficit and they need the money. And I get that. So mm -hmm. for anyone that's in that position, my comment is not for you. So for other individuals who just are a little greedy, right, you mm -hmm. can hold on to your property and it's going to be worth even more. And it might, the thing about me is, you know, if I sell this, where am I going to go? Like, I'm, I'm not going to go back and rent. And I'm not going to go, you know, further to, further out to get like a bigger property because my, everything I do in my life is in this area. So why would I move to like Arville or G-Berg or G-Town? Why would I move out there? Those, and then that's like 270 up all the way. And you know what I mean? Like, Everything that's conducive to what I do is in this area. So, every it's, and it seems like the summertime is the worst. Like all of a sudden, everyone's like sending me stuff, and it's like yeah, summertime when people uh, the biggest moving time. Oh, yeah, because it's warm. Everybody trying to move in the snow. Oh, I don't like because I'm like especially you know, when it's uh cold as hell outside. Probably that's gonna work. Because I'm sitting, sitting there like all oh, winter I didn't get anything. Spring I didn't get anything. It's like yeah, this the, the summer. Soon as summer hit, now y'all want my yeah. house. Yeah, and then, you can move in the summer you when it's hot out. You just make sure you got some ice water. What you gonna go in the house and drink uh, chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know I said hot chocolate. I'm like nah, ain't nobody trying to go through all that. Yeah, all that okay. Put our hands in the blistering cold. I'm gonna move on. I mean, you got and it. snow is enough. Like I don't want to deal with nothing else in the summer. So that's why they do it in the uh, in the, the summer. summer. Mm -hmm. It don't even matter. I'm not with it. So, as you say that, I was thinking, what's the end goal? So, when you buy a house, so you hold on to your property, and investors are lowballing you. What's the what's the end goal? What do you mean? Like for your property. What's my end goal? Mm -hmm. I know. Well, me not a place to stay. A place to live. So this is gonna be your only home. Um, no, ideally, no. ideally, no, right? But this is my safety net. I have something in my, somewhere else in my head, in my community that I would love to go. But in this very moment, this is where I'm at. Yeah, okay. okay. You know what I mean? And what I pay in mortgage is way less than any rent anywhere in a neighborhood that I would like to live in, if that makes sense. Like, of course, you can find cheap rent, but like, me walking home late at night, I need mentally I need to know that I'm secure. Like as safe as I can be. Because nowhere is safe, you know. People are always like, mm -hmm. Oh my god, like stuff happens everywhere, guys. Like cut the malarkey. Things happen everywhere. Mm -hmm. But you know, you want to put yourself in a situation that's a little bit more comfortable. Comfortable. Yeah, but I'm I'm not you know, I'm and even if, you know, even if I do get the spot, I'm still not interested in selling. I would love to rent. You, you know would what love I mean? to rent? Yeah, I would love to rent. I have two elementary schools which that are in walking distance from my house. This would be the perfect situation for a family. Mm. To just, you know, have little Johnny walk to school. So you rent it? Am I renting what? In your house. No. When well, you move to the other spot. Oh yeah, if I if I move to when I when speaking into existence, mm -hmm. I'm I'm renting my house. 
That's another stream of income. Like, yeah, there's difficulties in renting to people, but you got to do what it do. Well, you got to, right? Yeah, because you think about it. If I sell this house, it's a one-time payment. It's not mm -hmm. a continuous payment, one-time payment. Hopefully, you will invest in, you know, invest it right or whatever. Or you could invest into another property. But why do that when you... Just because of the how the market is in this particular area, like it is my best interest to rent, save that money that you know my tenants are paying, and then you know two, two or three years, take that money from the rent and buy something else. Okay. If that makes sense. So you can rent it for a lot more than you're paying your mortgage. Oh my God! Yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what it's about. Yeah. That's what it's about. And the key yeah. thing is location. Like, location is the key. Is key. It's key. Like, don't just Where go out there. Where are you going to go? Don't Where just go out there and, and, and buy a house just to buy a house. Like, you mm -hmm. have to see, you know, who who is your target audience? Are you looking for a family? So if you're looking for a family, you cannot buy a house in, in an area where the school system is not that great. Families are thinking about stuff like that. Like, what if we have, you know, two daughters and we want them to be at a blue ribbon school or a school that's ranked eight or better on that little great school scale or whatever right, it is. Right, so right. you're not going to not. Now, if your audience is, you know, uh, just a working guy and things like that and he's into, you know, they're into lifting and gym, you have to make sure that your property is. Near yeah, something, you know what I mean? Like you just don't go buy to buy. Like, but if there's potential for um, build up, mm -hmm. why not? Okay. Don't well, just buy it to buy, and then you're yeah. stuck with a house that you can't even rent. That's true too. You gotta be by something. Mm -hmm. You have to be near something. And the places I'm looking today, I'm looking like yo, where where do they go to the supermarket? Yeah, guys, supermarket is key. I am within one. To 1.5 miles of seven supermarkets, and there are places in DC that only have two, mm. and they're worried. Okay, so when I think about this real estate thing, I think about it in terms of what's happening in DC. You talk about location geography, right? They have mm -hmm. an RFK campus that is being built. Like it's it's called a campus. A campus? What is what is yes, that? Yes, like it's gonna what be like a, a big entertainment center. Oh. Over there, where I oh, so they're there. moving that, yeah, that's gonna come down. Like, yeah, I think that's gonna come down. Like, it's over for that. Like, and if they don't tear it down, they're gonna they it's gonna look brand new because they got the stadium mm -hmm. and they got a, what what is uh the army over there, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So to, right, I used to run track in there, I used to run indoor track in over mm -hmm. there, yeah. Um, so and I went to a boxing match over there, whatever happened, but like they're they're doing a whole development plan, they've already started. <laughs> Over there, by saying called RFK Camp is gonna be in big entertainment center and life for kids, and it's gonna be almost like the harbor at MGM, like kind of like that. I'm pretty sure you're gonna have ice cream stores, so like how does that outside? You know, you're gonna mm -hmm. get some fro yo, whatever have you. All that stuff is gonna be it's literally gonna be like and I guess the way I kind of consider like MGM kind of harbor, like you got the grassy area, you can take pictures, you got the Ferris wheel, it might not be as extravagant with a Ferris wheel, but you know what I'm saying, you know, it's gonna be lit. And then also they have the <laughs> the very farms redevelopment. Why you pause like that? I'm like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's funny. Yes, I did pause. The very farms redevelopment. Um, so when that happens, you know, people buy property in that area. Your your community is growing. Like they yeah. really have a whole plan of what it's going to look like. They have a full video on it. It's like you can. Go Google this stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, the information is there. Just look for it. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it will tell you about all the stuff going on in the area. I mean, think about uh, Amazon coming here. You're talking about one of the biggest companies in the world. Right Amazon now. is coming Putting to the area. Putting its second headquarters in Washington, D.C. Or just outside of Washington, D.C. in Arlington. Which is now going to be considered a national landing, I think the name yeah, is. So, like... They renamed the sucker. Like, the, literally the second they bought it... The next day it was called something else. I was like, what? Yeah. National Landing? Y'all changed the whole name of the area because y'all coming here? That's wild to me. Mm -hmm. And that's when I knew when uh, 
money means power, right? Yeah. Like, you're the biggest company in the world. And these cities were dropping off proposals, giving them, like, million and billion dollar tax breaks so they could bring their company there because their company is going to bring in jobs. And those jobs are going to be taxes, tax, yeah. taxes coming in to the city for them. So they were giving them like million dollar tax break to encourage Amazon to come in. So Amazon had the upper hand. They could pick, could have picked any city in the U.S. and they chose D.C. Why do you think they chose the area? I think it's an up and coming area. Um, you still get your city life, and it's not like yeah, you know I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it gives them a base that's kind of close to it. And I know, um, I think it's important for, especially us in this this uh, area to... <laughs> this man talking about your dad going guava juice. There's some more on the side if you want. <laughs> on that, on that uh, side right there. I was like, uh, I'm not sure he's going to like it. So, yeah, but, nah, it's good. Um, yeah, so for them, to, to uh, for Amazon to be in proximity to, you know, the DMV area, like mm-hmm. property value. But the thing about it is, they're creating their own community. Like they're they're gonna build apartments and oh, homes and stuff. Community. But my thing is, like you know, that's gonna be expensive. So for the people that wanna, and they're also paying their employees six figures. That's, that's what I read. My so my thing money. is, I'm not gonna take that six figures. And in, in, I mean, it, out of convenience, yes. But why not move a little further into Maryland, where you can get, you know, a nice home, a little bit of land, and keep that money to yourself. So I feel like. You know the Maryland and the in the DC area, the properties are just gonna they'll start going. Yeah, they're gonna fly up even more. Rent is already crazy, especially in DC for like so a you're little studio. That someone should buy then. Yeah, that's I'm like you can't buy, buy. This is why my brother's like, listen, <laughs> I'm driving around trying to find something to buy. <laughs> like, listen, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm just trying to figure it out. I'm really just trying to study the game right now. I'm very early in the process, but I know. Later on down the line, if it goes the way I see it, I would love to be a person that helps put people on to this thing. Yeah. Like, get the knowledge yep. and put my people on. Because that's really what it's about, right? Yep. Like, I want to learn, I want to win, and I want to be able to help other people. Yep, have other you people. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. they got nieces and nephews that's out here. I want to make sure that they're good and they, you know, and they're putting themselves in positions to win. Yeah. And it's a, honestly, it takes nothing from you to help. You know what I mean? Like, there's so many people sitting on valuable information, and they're like, I don't tell anyone. But the person has to want it for themselves. Like, you got to be hungry. Yeah. Like, you got to want it for yourself. You got to be like, you know what, damn, I'm up and had this, so. No, no, no. I'm saying for the people who already have, Mm -hmm. and they're like, your position is, I want to be able to share. Right. A lot of people are not like that. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? They, They already where they at, and it's like, with you sharing, we're not we're still not gonna be on the same level because you yeah. should be elevating even I'm, more. I'm, I'm, so for you to tell me, Oh, by the way, this particular place they're giving away money. That's how I got a little bit of my money. That takes nothing away from you to share that. That's it. And like, there's so many people that are like, No, to like, say something good about someone. It doesn't take anything you know what I mean? Like share the information. Yeah, share. Say the nice things to the to, you know, your neighbors, your loved ones, your friends. Um, share, share whatever information you have, man. Yeah. Share whatever information you All have. All right, okay. guys, one moment. Tenemos postre. Dessert. Dessert. What a pleasant surprise. Oh. All right, mm-hmm. so, per usual, we're going to have Mike... G- <laughs> we're going to have Mike guess what he thinks we're having for dessert. What do you guys think we're having for dessert? Comment down below. Comment below, guys. Yes. Um, because right now, I am flabbergasted. Um, I don't have a clue. You gotta I'm guess. I'm gonna think it's some type of cake because we have a fork here and I'm gonna assume that that's ice cream. Yeah, so he... Um, Alright, so you're thinking cake and ice cream? Yeah. Alright, so he's half right. Okay, so right, I'm so- about the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what about the ice cream? And then the, in this container we have bread pudding. Bread pudding. So this is my this is my favorite. So you can open up. Okay, we'll open up together. Ready? All right, let's do it. All right. Ooh. So this is our bread pudding. On there, uh, doesn't look super bread. super appetizing, appetizing because the way it's like set up, but it's delicious. So I was. And that star there. that star fruit on there. 
Starfruit. You get starfruit too? Mm -mm. Oh God, I don't hear me talk Jamaica. <laughs> I want to type of ice cream this. This look like grape nut, you know? No, it's coconut. Coconut. Ooh, yeah. my right. favorite. Yeah, can... All right, so any last minute comments to Jackson for anyone who is first generation American, anyone that's looking to invest in themselves, anyone that has information, like how do you think it's a good way for them to go about sharing that information, disseminating information to other people? Okay. Um, so my thing is this, be confident in what you're doing, right? Because I think a lot of people get in their own way. I feel like a lot of people get in their own head and they just don't get things done because they're thinking about what couldn't happen, what could happen, all these negative things, like just letting her small obstacles like become bigger hurdles mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like just do it like you know when you make that new year's resolution at the beginning of the year don't just say it like put a plan in place like mm -hmm. and actually do what you say you're gonna do mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i said i know i'm the beginning of 2000 maybe 16 or 17 i was like okay i want to get another job and i want to get um and I want to start looking in the grad school. And I did both of those things. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I did both of those things. Just kind of happened for me. You know what I mean? And I give uh, all thanks to God because I know that without Just the him, blessings. Listen, Just the blessings. <laughs> won't he do it? <laughs> you hear me? Uh, well, it's so funny because um, cause my friend wrote a poem on me from grad school. He's a like, poet. I mean, I got Gavin Bennett uh, in that chest nope i believe on instagram mm -hmm. um and well you can watermark it yeah okay, okay yeah so we can do is that. it cute um he's a black guy <laughs> I, think, I think he's a good looking guy i think he's a good looking guy from a half from a heterosexual male to another heterosexual man <laughs> uh, disclaimer and like yeah i think he that's my man mm -hmm. like i would say oh yeah he ugly like he smack like some friends you got they smack but <laughs> um but now nah, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. All my friends, um, they regular look at me. Now nah, I'm playing. They look good, man. We all good looking people. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> um, I'm just sorry about the winning this. What do you mean? It's the star fruit? The star fruit? Five finger? What do y'all call it in Jamaica? Star fruit. Starfruit. Yeah, it's usually probably when you see it yellow. That's the green. Mm. It is different. The starfruit? My suggestion for people to pass information, if you have information that you want to share with people, um, you can contact me. us. You can contact him. What's your. Hey, we're here. I'm at Nightlife Mike, spelt regular night, regular life <laughs> Mike. <laughs> okay? <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you know, I'm not like Mike on Instagram. You can let me know. Um, my, I'm just like a genuine dude, man. So I don't want to be promoting nothing that mm -hmm. I don't really believe in. Because um, that just ain't really my, that's why he's my on, style. That's why he's on my channel. Like everyone, yeah, man. Like, everyone on my channel, I have experience with them personally. And they're genuine people. Yeah. Like, so, speaking of investments, um, you know, we have... A guy that I went to high school with, Daryl Jones, shout out to him. Um, and he just opened a lounge, Felicity Lounge on A Street. Yeah, so, you know, that is like an example of someone studying the game, right? Like, support black business. Um, show this man some love. You have any events, things of that nature, go show up. Pull up with my boy. Um, you know, and you know, just want to see everyone succeed, man. So, you know. Uh, uh, support Daryl. And anyone who's invested in his dreams. So just make sure you check it out. I will put the address and the link to their um, Instagram page. All right. There it is. All right. So don't forget. You can follow Mike. At Nightlife Mike on Instagram. And don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, hey, follow, follow, and share. And share, share, share. All right, guys? Yeah, share. Um, we appreciate y'all, and until next time. Yeah.